Now it comes down to, do you need 110 MOA's worth of internal adjustment? And will you even be using it to begin with? And welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're gonna to be doing a comparison video between the new Vortex Strike Eagle and the old reliable Vortex Viper PSD Gen 2. Now, the Vortex Viper PSD Gen 2 has been out for a while. Now, the Strike Eagle is fairly new for 2020, and it actually has a massive following now. I mean, people are loving the Strike Eagle. But which one is better, and which one should you choose? I mean, the price of the Strike Eagle is around $699, whereas the Vortex Viper PST Gen 2 is about a thousand bucks. So does the price warrant choosing one or the other? Well, I'll help you find out today. Now, if you're looking to pick one up, you can check out DanteSports.com if you're in Canada. Now, if you're not in Canada, check out the other links in the descriptions below. I left some there for you. Now, let's start this review off with the glass quality. Likely the most, one of the most important deciding factors for this review. So have a look at the Strike Eagle. This is what it looks like. Okay. Now have a look at the Vortex Viper PST Gen 2. And this is at 25 magnification. Now the Vortex Viper PST Gen 2 is marginally sharper. It has a slightly sharper image. Now is that going to be a deciding feature for you? Well, it's going to perform a little bit better. Now I do find the Strike Eagle has a brighter image, but not quite as sharp. So the glass quality in it is slightly inferior to the PST. But mind you, if the PST had a 56 millimeter objective, likely it would be brighter and sharper. So these are a few things to consider when you're choosing the optic. Now, I would give the point to the Vortex Viper PST because it has a sharper quality of image. Next, we have the eye relief. So let's start with the Vortex Viper PST. So the, the fast focus eyepiece is super smooth. There's no slop whatsoever. It's also the same with the Strike Eagle. They're both really nice. But the Vortex PST has 3.3 inches of eye relief, which is fairly modest when it comes to these expensive scopes. I would personally prefer the Strike Eagle because it has 3.7 inches of eye relief. And not only that, the eye box is more forgiving in the Strike Eagle than it is in the Vortex PST. So in that aspect, I would give the point to the Strike Eagle. Next, we have the field of view, which is an often overlooked part of any optics comparison or review. Uh, both of them in this scenario are very, very close. So at the highest magnification, um, the PST has 4.8 feet of diameter at 100 yards, and the Strike Eagle has 5.2 feet. So it's a little bit more on the Strike Eagle, which you would expect because it's a bigger optic, obviously. And at the highest magnification, the PST has 24.1, and the Strike Eagle has 24.5. So very marginal differences, and I wouldn't use that to decide on which optic you should buy. So we're gonna give the point to the Strike Eagle in that regards. It's a marginal advantage, very marginal with these specs. Next, we have the focus parallax. So this is fairly important. Okay, so one thing to note is the PST starts at 25 yards, whereas the Strike Eagle starts at 15. So if you're shooting rimfire, well, this obviously might be a bit better suited. So the dials on both of these are pretty much identical. As you can see, they're both just the same size. They both have the same knurling, but one of them is much smoother than the other. Take a look at this. Two fingers, super smooth like butter and it's beautiful. Now the Strike Eagle, it turns, but it's a little bit stiffer. You can obviously see it's a little bit stiffer and I have to use a little bit more force to turn it. So if I was competing, likely I would prefer something that's smoother, whereas something that's a little bit stiffer. So that's something to consider. In this aspect, I will be giving the point to the Vortex Viper PST. Also something to note is there is no slop whatsoever in these dials. Uh, next we have the turrets. Now this is the steak and potatoes of our review here. Okay, so on the Vortex Viper PST, we have 70 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. Yes, it has a zero stop, and yes, these turrets feel beautiful, and they are super audible and positive. Listen to this. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna love dialing these. Okay, now, um, the Vortex Strike Eagle also has a zero stop, has 110 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. Now, that is a lot. You're gonna like that. And it has locking turrets, and listen to these turrets. They're 
very audible, very positive. But which one's more audible? Which one's more positive? Well, positivity feel is likely better than being audible. The Vortex PST has better quality turrets than the Strike Eagle. Now, are they a lot better? Well, they're significantly better in feel. Now it comes down to, do you need 110 MOAs worth of internal adjustment? And will you even be using it to begin with? Most of us, the answer is no. And also a thing to note is the zero stop in the Strike Eagle limits you to, to 47 MOAs worth of adjustment when it's installed, whereas the PST does not. So let's say, for example, you have a 20 MOA rail on your rifle and you have the PST. So that would theoretically give you 55 MOAs worth of internal adjustment to use. Whereas if you had a 20 MOA rail with this optic on it, with your zero stop installed, you still have 47 MOAs worth of, worth of adjustment to use. Now for most people in a PRS match, I mean, 47 is gonna be more than enough to compete with. So is it a deciding factor? Depends, are you using a, something with a very low ballistic coefficient? I mean, if you're shooting a 308 that's going super slow, I mean, maybe you might want to choose a better caliber. But I mean, you'll get more internal, you'll get more adjustment with the zero stop with the PST if you have the proper base. I mean, you could put a 30 MOA base with the PST and then you would have 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustment to use with the zero stop. Whereas with 30 MOA base with the Strike Eagle, you'd still have 47. I mean, mind you, you could just take it out and dial to extreme long ranges, which is the advantage of having the Strike Eagle. So that's gonna be up to you to decide and up to your application. So know your ballistics up to a thousand meters. How much do you need to dial? Find that out and then you can maybe make your choice. And then again, do you need to spend a thousand? The glass quality is still pretty darn good in the Strike Eagle. Also, the zero stop mechanisms are pretty different. This one has a really easily installable one and this one is a little bit more complicated. If you wanna find out how to set it, check out our video on the Vortex Viper PST. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward when you watch the video. And next we have the reticle. Now both of these are equal in that regards because they both have the EBR-7C in MOA or in mils. So you can choose your units of measurement, but it's still gonna be the EBR-7C. So it's fairly limited, but I mean, most PRS shooters love it. So, I mean, what's not to love? It's a pretty damn nice reticle. And also the warranty on these optics are gonna be the same. So that, that's not gonna be a deciding feature. Now, which one would I choose? Well, I do prefer smoother functioning, uh, focus parallax adjustments, and more positive turrets. And I likely will never use, you know, 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustment on my 308. I mean, that's some pretty damn far distances. Uh, I mean, the Strike Eagle is really, really good too. I mean, and it's cheaper. So for what I'm doing, I'm just shooting up to about 830. Uh, likely the Strike Eagle will suit my needs just fine. And I mean, it's a pretty reliable optic. And one of the deciding features is how forgiving the eye box is. I really, really am picky when it comes to that. And for me, if I throw my cheek there, I want it to be a clear sight picture. Whereas I don't have to be like, okay, I gotta move a little bit. All right, there we go. It's a nice clear sight picture. I prefer a more forgiving eye box. Okay, so some of these are really gonna be uh, up to you to decide. But anyway, that should be sufficient information to help you make your decision. And if you are looking to pick one up, check out the links in the descriptions below. I'll leave a few of them there for you. Also, if you don't already have some of these instruments, uh, like a Kilo 2400 BDX or a Kestrel, these are a big, big, uh, they're a must have when it comes to long range shooting. This is the difference between wasting hundreds of rounds or you know, getting on target within two rounds on your steel at 820 meters. Um, I've used these, uh, I've used the Kilo 20, 2400 BDX uh, for about a year and a half now. And I mean, alone this instrument is pretty good. Uh, with the Kestrel, it's an excellent, excellent combination to have. I mean, it's, it's pretty much a must have for the long range shooter. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you in the next review.